Cody Rhodes is blazing a trail as one of the biggest superstars in the WWE, recently claiming victory in the 2023 Royal Rumble and securing his spot in the main event at WrestleMania, where he'll take on Roman Reigns for the Universal WWE Championship. While you may be familiar with Cody's legendary father, Dusty, and half-brother, Dustin, there are even more wrestlers that you might not know are also part of the Rhodes family tree. In this video, we'll be covering these unknown family members and explore their relationship to the Rhodes family and their impact on the world of professional wrestling. Fred Ottman, aka The Shockmaster. Over the years, Ottman performed under several names and personas, but it was during his time as a member of the WWE roster between 1989 and 1993 that he truly shone. As Tugboat and Typhoon, Fred captivated audiences with his larger-than-life characters and powerhouse moves, but what Ottman is perhaps most infamous for is a debut that will forever go down in history as one of the most epic blunders of all time. As the Shockmaster in WCW, he stumbled onto the scene in a moment that will live on forever as a hilarious moment in wrestling history. This larger-than-life wrestler not only made a name for himself in the ring, but also made a lasting bond with the Rhodes family by marrying the sister of Michelle Cody Rhodes, mother and Dusty Rhodes' second wife. He became Cody's uncle. Starting in the rough and tumble world of smaller wrestling promotions, Ottman, who was trained by Boris Malenko, was first seen in February 1985, where he made his debut as Siegfried the Giant in Championship Wrestling from Georgia. He later also worked as Big Bubba in Texas All-Star Wrestling and the Continental Wrestling Association. His first big break came in 1988 as Big Man Steel, wrestling for Championship Wrestling from Florida and defeating Dusty Rhodes for the NWA Florida Heavyweight Championship. Ottman burst onto the WWF scene in 1989, making waves as the mighty tugboat, trained by none other than Hulk Hogan himself. He was a key ally in Hogan's battles against his foes. At the 1990 Survivor Series, he made his pay-per-view debut as part of Hogan's team to take on the likes of Earthquake, Dino Bravo, Haku, and The Barbarian in a traditional elimination match. In 1991, Tugboat made a shocking move that shook the wrestling world. He eliminated none other than his friend, Hulk Hogan, from a battle royale. This act of treachery marked the beginning of Tugboat's transformation into the villainous Typhoon. Teaming up with Earthquake and the cunning manager Jimmy Hart, Typhoon formed the destructive tag team known as the Natural Disasters. But their reign of terror was short-lived, as the team soon found themselves endearing themselves to the fans and turning face once again. This change in fortunes was sweetened even further when they captured the SWS and WWF World Tag Team Championships. After losing the Tag Team Championships, Typhoon's star seemed to dim. WCW Fall Brawl 1993 was a night of high stakes and intense action, with the main event being a brutal War Games match. The teams were set, with Sid Vicious, Big Van Vader, and Harlem Heat facing off against Sting, Davey Boy Smith, Dustin Rhodes, and a mysterious fourth wrestler. The mystery was revealed during a Flair for the Gold interview segment before Fall Brawl. The wrestler was none other than the Shockmaster. Dressed in a glittering Stormtrooper helmet with low production values, a ridiculous voiceover, and an embarrassing fall. This segment remains one of the most unintentionally hilarious in the history of the sport. Despite its missteps, the Shockmaster's debut will always be a timeless classic a testament to the unpredictability and spectacle that is professional wrestling. Ottman remembers, They put me in a stormtrooper mask, which they painted and covered in glitter. I couldn't see a thing. I got to the wall and put my hands up like a double axe handle and bust through. The top broke perfectly, but the bottom didn't give. The momentum took me through the wall and to the floor. From that moment on, it was clear that the Shockmaster would never be taken seriously as a wrestler. The once intimidating character was transformed into a klutz, without Massman's normal voice, 
Despite this setback, Fred Ottman remained in WCW for the rest of the year. In 1994, he made a brief and uneventful return to the WWF, a shadow of the dominant force he had once been. Jerry Sags Jerry Sags made a name for himself as one half of the tag team, the Nasty Boys. Teamed up with Brian Knobs, they went on to capture the tag team championship in both the WWF and WCW, cementing their status as one of the greatest tag teams in wrestling history. Sags too tied the knot with a sister of the legendary Dusty Rhodes, getting his place as Cody's uncle in the Rhodes family tree. The Nasty Boy, Sags, made his mark in the world of professional wrestling as one half of the legendary tag team. But did you know he actually began his career as a referee in the AWA in 1985? It wasn't until a year later that he teamed up with Brian Knobs to form the Nasty Boys. With five PWF Tag Team Championships under their belt, the Nasty Boys made the move to the NWA's Jim Crockett Promotions, which would later become World Championship Wrestling. Their WWF run started in 1990, and their success continued as they captured the WWF Tag Team Championship from the Hart Foundation and feuded with top tag teams of the era. Returning to WCW in 1993, the Nasty Boys continued to dominate the tag team division and became a key part of the company. However, by 1996, Sag's neck injuries began to catch up with him and was asked to finish his bookings while being protected in his matches. When Sag stepped into the ring, teaming with Knobs against Scott Hall and Kevin Nash, little did he know that his match would end in a heated confrontation. After being hit in the back of the head with an object that he thought was thrown by Scott Hall, Sags was so incensed that he punched Hall straight in the mouth, knocking out some teeth, according to rumors. But after reviewing the footage, Sags discovered that it was actually Kevin Nash who had thrown the title belt at him. Nash was quick to defend his friend Scott Hall, confronting Sags in the shower with a baseball bat and making it clear that his time in WCW was over. Sags' neck injuries were a tough blow, but he wasn't ready to hang up his wrestling boots just yet. Despite having to retire from the ring, he teamed up with his partner, Brian Knobs, for a few more matches in the coming years, including a heated feud with Team 3D, better known as the Dudley Boys, in TNA in 2010. Before we continue our journey through the extended Rhodes family, let's take a moment to acknowledge two important women related to the family, Randy Rhodes and Terry Runnels. Although they may not be primarily in-ring wrestlers, they are undoubtedly important personalities in the world of wrestling. Brandi Rhodes is the wife of Cody Rhodes and is known to fans who followed Cody's absence from WWE between 2016 and 2022, as she often accompanied Cody to the ring and was the chief brand officer in AEW, which Cody co-founded. WWE fans actually might remember her as the ring announcer Eden, who left WWE 2016 and AEW 2022 together with Cody. Terry Runnels, better known as Marlena or Alexandra York, was married to Dustin Rhodes. She was a manager in WCW and WWF, even having her own faction in WCW, the York Foundation. In WWF, she was the valet Marlena of Dustin Rhodes' character, Gold Dust. Magnum T.A. The last wrestler in this video might technically not be related to the family, but as he is the godfather of Cody Rhodes, Magnum T.A. surely can be considered to be part of the family. Imagine the biggest what-if scenarios in professional wrestling, and chances are Magnum T.A. tops the list. He made his debut in 1978 and quickly made a name for himself, wrestling in CWF and PNW, before joining Jim Crockett Promotions in 1984. He then quickly saw success in winning the United States Championship from Wahoo McDaniel. Magnum TA was best known for his intense feud with the Four Horsemen, specifically Tully Blanchard. He defeated Blanchard in a steel cage I Quit match at Starcade 1985, securing his second win of the United States title. This match remains a defining moment of both men's careers. Magnum would later marry the now ex-wife of Tully Blanchard, which he was married to the entire time they were feuding. In 1986, Magnum T.A. feuded with Ivan and Nikita Koloff over the United States title. 
a punch thrown at NWA President Bob Gagel resulted in Magnum being stripped of his title. The intense rivalry with Koloff reached a boiling point as they engaged in a best of seven series, but ultimately Nikita Koloff came out on top. Undeterred, Magnum set his sights even higher, launching a bold challenge against world heavyweight champion Ric Flair. Although he put up a fierce fight, the title ultimately remained just out of reach. Tragically, the in-ring career of Magnum TA came to an abrupt end in October 1986 due to a devastating accident. While driving in the rain, Magnum lost control of his Porsche, causing it to crash into a telephone pole. The impact of the wreck was so severe that it left Magnum paralyzed on the right side of his body and destroyed his C4 and C5 vertebrae, putting an end to his wrestling days. Despite his devastating injury, Magnum TA refused to step away from the squared circle entirely. Instead, he took on new roles as a manager and commentator, still staying an integral part of the storylines. He made sporadic appearances in WCW up until 1993. Imagine what could have been if tragedy never struck. With his rugged good looks, unparalleled talent, and a fan base that adored him, Magnum TA was on the fast track to becoming one of the greatest wrestling superstars of all time. Who knows, he could have been mentioned alongside legends like Sting and Ric Flair and carved out a place among wrestling's elite. But alas, his fateful car crash in 1986 brought a sudden end to his career, leaving us only to wonder what could have been.